So we're at the Arm Tech Con 2010, and uh, you're showing off your car. We are. Yeah. So my name's Croy Xavier, and I'm with Kinex Software Systems, and we're showing the work that we do with automobiles for digital instrument clusters and infotainment systems. This is a nice looking car. It is. It's Let's just a... walk around one second. Sure. So uh, it's a Corvette, right? And, That's correct. Uh, but your stuff is in, in the front, at the, at, the, at the driver's seat, right? That's right. So, so our, our, uh, our products are software products, and they're in the digital instrument cluster yeah. in the dash here. Would you like to sit? Sure, yeah. yeah. All right. So, so one of the things that we're showing here is an electronic digital instrument cluster. So we've removed all the traditional analog gauges with an LCD screen. And one of the things that you can see is how the, um, the dash is configurable. So you can have uh, not just the tachometer and the speedometer, but you can have um, other configurable data that appears on the dash. So things like you could have maps on the dash, um, you can have weather, other information that the driver might find useful um, about road conditions and any other content that they, they might uh, like to have while they're driving. Is this solution on the market? Uh, these solutions in many different ways are available on the market. And actually, why don't you grab a, a picture of, uh, of this here so you can see the navigation on the dash. Whoa. So it's... Uh... And then you've got the weather. So these solutions are in the market. Uh, so as an example, um, the, uh, the new uh, Land Rovers are using our digital instrument cluster technology. It's built in. Built in, yes. The cars people can buy. Yes. And they have this screen, exactly like that? Not exactly like this. Okay. So every car manufacturer, this is our own concept piece, every manufacturer will implement it in alignment with their brand yeah. um, and the unique look and feel that they'd like for, for their, their design. So for example, what kind of screen is this, uh, this one? What so I'd like to show you another screen that we have over here. We've got a larger LCD over here where we're showing our reference platform, our Kinex car reference platform for um, infotainment. And you have a, a variety of applications. So as an example, there's a number of cloud-based services here. So bringing in content over, uh, over the cloud, such as YouTube, Pandora, um, weather. We also have other controls for the car. So as an example, we've replaced all the traditional analog controls for climate control and audio with these touch-based graphics. So I can change the temperature of the seats with heated seats, or I can adjust the climate in the vehicle, all from the same panel. So is it is uh, QNX doing uh, OS, or is it is it based on uh, Linux, or is it just something different, or what is it? So QNX, the QNX Neutrino real-time operating system is a, a POSIX certified uh, real-time operating system. It brings added capabilities of reliability, scalability, and performance, which you really need in a, in a, a design like an automobile. In addition to that, um, QNIX is really a full-featured operating system. So we provide the networking components, the file systems, the graphics, and the multimedia, the complete software solution that you need to build out these complex infotainment and digital instrument clusters. So, uh, is, what's the future plan? Are you going like, to uh, have more stuff, more features? Because uh, like software, you can do anything, basically. Absolutely. You know, this is really just the, the beginning of a, an exciting revolution in, uh, in vehicle electronics. So some of the new things that we're taking a look at are things like integration of mobile devices with BlackBerry connectivity um, and iPod connectivity. So that you, so that um, uh, users can bring all the latest content into the vehicle with them. Yeah. So there is a certain cost to get like the the arm arm powered uh, uh, screens in there and the car, and but of, of course pricing is something that the car manufacturers decide at the end and stuff. But That's right. do you think there's a point where every car should have something like this? You know, I I think. Um, I, I think it's not so much if uh, if the car should have something like this. It's really driven by consumer demand and really extending the safety 
um, and the quality of the cars to meet the needs of consumers today. Um, in this particular vehicle, we're using an ARM, uh, ARM Cortex A8 based on the i.mx uh, 51 by Freescale. So it's a, a, a high performance, low cost processor, which really adds a lot of value to the vehicle at a low cost. So I think uh, as you begin to see more and more deployment and adoption, really cost is not the factor. It's really going to be more about the, the way consumers want to live inside the automobile environment. They want to bring all the, all the features that they have in their mobile devices to the vehicle to enhance the, the quality of the driving experience. What if a car manufacturer would like to have, uh, let's say, some features from uh, Google, uh, like the maps and uh, Absolutely. Uh, all this stuff? Can you integrate? We can. So as an example, <laughs> on this dash here... So there we just had to delete the uh, BlackBerry, who synced. Yep. And we tr we'll try the navigation? Yes, so we've got uh, our navigation dis uh, display here. And what we offer is a variety of location-based services. So whether you want to find the local gas station, the coffee shop, or other attractions, it's all available to you here. So this is pulled from the internet? That's correct. Stored? This particular one is a, a stored demo application. Um, but we do have this working with things like Google Earth uh, in other production vehicles. Production vehicles. So you can buy a car with Google Earth today. You can buy a you can buy a production vehicle with Google Earth today. Google Earth navigation. Do you, do you beam it over behind the screen, or rather not have too much distraction? Uh, you, you could you could do that either way, yeah. depending on the design of the of the vehicle. Nice. In this particular case, we're we've integrated um, our BlackBerry content, and we're broadcasting that to the dash so that I can see the content that's actually on my BlackBerry. Without wires? Without wires. We're using a technology called Real VNC, which allows nice. me to transmit that content. So you install an app on, on your BlackBerry and that's it? That's correct, yeah. And you need to configure it once and there it is? That's correct. Is it a lot of uh, executives have this already? Uh, this is more at the concept phase, but it's the type of functionality that consumers are beginning to expect in the designs of, of, uh, of their cars for tomorrow. It's actually pretty awesome. And it could work with Android and iPhone if they have real VNC, they do? Today, today we're working with the BlackBerry. Yeah. Uh, but yes, you could use this with other handsets if you, if you chose to. Nice. So, and, uh, but you can't, uh, can you actually touch here and it happens there? It's both ways? No, but we do have inputs here. So as an example, here I can bring up the controls and we can control All right. control the handset from there. So here we, here we have the iPod out and what it's doing is it's broadcasting the iPod component of the um, iPhone to the head unit and then we can that's correct yep we've got the little connector right over here yeah and you have all the songs right there and then we have all the songs all the you know the traditional iPod interface to be able to select and play what it is that you'd like. Cool. And it's only iPod for now? Or could it be like a, an Android or something else? Or it, it could be, yes. Yeah? Yeah. Support for anything. Okay, cool. Alright. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank